Are you currently trying to find out if a track saw is right for your shop? Do you have any concerns about the versatility of a track saw for your upcoming projects? If you answered yes to either of those questions, then stick around in this video as I demonstrate one of the many uses a track saw has in my wood shop. Hey, I'm Ben Marshall, and welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday, a weekly video segment where I share some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you out in the shop this week in only two minutes or less. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to cut out tenons using just a track saw. A few months ago, I posted this. While I did enjoy the people's negative reactions and I found it quite funny, I only wanted to challenge people's beliefs on how versatile they thought the track saw could actually be. To help prove my point, I'm taking some of those common misconceptions about the track saw and making videos to disprove those associations. In my first video of what I will believe to be an ongoing track saw series, I decided to tackle one of the best journey methods in woodworking, the Morrison tenon. I'm going to show the two methods to cut a tenon with a track saw and I think you'd be surprised at how uncomplicated these methods actually are. To make this video more concise, I've already marked my layout lines for this cut on both my demonstration pieces as well as cut out my mortises off camera. Now let's go ahead and throw two minutes on the clock and get started. Mortise and tenons are an easy and simple way to join two pieces of wood. The additional surface area and hidden substrate adds strength to the joint while keeping a minimal aesthetic appearance. There are two ways to cut tenons on the track saw. A crosscut section at the end grain or a repeat kerf cut at the face grain. The crosscut section is more suitable for shorter pieces while the repeat kerf cut is better suited for cutting tenons on long boards held against a flat surface. The crosscut section is certainly the quickest and cleanest method for cutting tenons. However, it requires additional tools like clamps and you need a work surface with a right angle to hold your piece in place. The repeat kerf cut method takes longer and leaves a rougher surface requiring cleanup. However, this is a minimal approach to cutting tenons. The cross section cut requires a work table with two adjoining surfaces that form a right angle. I'm using the Festool MFT3. However, any work surface that allows you to clamp your work piece at 90 degrees to the track saw will do the job. First, attach your blank tenon vertically with a clamp, leveling the end grain to the horizontal surface while using a square to ensure the board is aligned vertically. Next, lay your guide rail down so the splinter guard is along the cut line so the blade cuts to the outside of your tenon. Set your track saw to the desired tenon depth and cut. Next, you're going to flip the board 180 degrees and repeat to the opposite side. Then we're going to clamp the tenon along the edge grain, leveling the top again with the horizontal surface and repeat the same steps as before to complete the cross section cuts. Next, we're going to lay the tenon piece flat on the horizontal surface and clamp it in place. Then take another tenon blank and use it to support the guide rail for the next few cuts. Then we're going to set the guide rail with the track saw on top of the tenon and set the plunge step so that it just breaks the perpendicular cut curve. Line up the splinter guard with the layout line and cut into the marked tenon area. Repeat this for all four sides and now you have a perfectly cut tenon using the cross section method. For the curve cut method, place the guide rail and track saw on top of the tenon and set the plunge depth using the layout markings. Next, place another piece of material close to the tenon blank to help support the guide rail. Align the splinter guard to your layout mark and make a clean cut. Working your way towards the end of the board, continue to make cross cuts until enough material has been removed to break away easily. Repeat this step on all four sides, then clean up the tenon using a chisel. With the tenons finished, you can cut the mortise and the adjoining board for a proper fit. While I only showed how to cut just one tenon with a track saw, you can actually cut multiple tenons at once, something you can't do with a traditional cabinet saw without making a really huge jig. You're only limited by the amount of clamps you have and the angular work surface that's needed. This was just an example of one of the many common tasks a track saw can do in a wood shop, and I hope that you found it insightful. That's gonna do it for this video. If there are any other type of cuts you want to see done on the track saw, make sure that you leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see whatever your recommendations are. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, make sure that you subscribe. And until the next video, have a good day.